So I'm back with you tonight, and uh, tonight is a great topic. So grab a pen and paper, and we'll get right to it. I am on Facebook Live, always Sunday nights, usually at 7.30 p.m., and I'm here to teach you how to be and attract an emotionally healthy, evolved partner for the relationship of your dreams and to help you create the life and love that you are passionate about. Again, I'm Rihanna Milne. I'm a licensed, certified um Licensed Certified Life, Love, and Relationship Coach, a Certified Addictions Professional, a Licensed Mental Health Counselor, a Student Assistance Counselor within the schools, a number one best-selling author of two books, my book Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love You Deserve, and Live Beyond Your Dreams, From Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose, and Success. And I just recently got done taping a, t taping a TV show, a TV docu-series called Radical Dating, Finding Lasting Love Over 40, where I was one of five life and dating coaches helping a very special client feel amazing about their life and to find fabulous love. So that should be coming out somewhere or fall, so keep your eye open for the announcements about it. You're going to learn a whole lot on that show. My practice of 17 years is called Therapy by the Sea. It's located in Delray Beach, Florida, Jog in Atlantic. However, I do coach worldwide by Skype. And um, if you're interested in learning more about that, just go to my website, rihannamilne.com, and fill out a form for a free coaching strategy session. And I will set you up. You will meet with me. And if you feel coaching is a great fit for you, then I will give you more details on that. And I'd be really honored to help you. So let's get going on to tonight's topic. It is the third Sunday in February, the 20th, and we will continue to celebrate Love Month, where I'll be giving you really clear examples on how to have a fabulous loving relationship. So if you missed any of these for February, scroll down my Facebook fan page, which is Coach Rihanna Milne, Look for those tapes, or even more simpler, go on my YouTube channel, which is my name, Rihanna Milne. All the videos are there, and it says Facebook 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's great if you watch them from number 1 on down. It's kind of a continuing ed series. And uh, while you're there, please like each video and subscribe to the page. And that way, if you do subscribe, you will not miss out on anything. As soon as I do a tape, you get a notice that a new tape is there. So I'm um, always here to help you the best that I can. So tonight's topic, I will explain. Uh, it's from my number one best-selling book on Amazon, Love Beyond Your Dreams. And it is from chapter 18. And this is the book I pull it from. It's 424 pages of juicy tidbits. This is my copy, the office copy, where I highlight and tab off and tell you the juiciest of the best. And this is based on over 200 sources of research. So there's so much good stuff in here. So I can only give you little tidbits, but it's from chapter 18, what is the evolved relationship and how to have one. So that's what I want to share with you tonight. Now, there's two lists of nine that I'm going to go over with you, and both are really important. So like I said, if you want to write them down, let's get to it. The secret of the evolved relationship. It's really important that both partners and the couple itself as an entity so there's three things here. You, your partner, and the relationship have these nine characters or qualities within themselves. The first one is honesty. You must be completely honest with your partner. Trust is, is so important, and you know you really want to feel that you can be your total authentic self with your partner. So honestly, honesty is number one. Second is integrity. This is one of my favorite characteristics within the emotionally healthy person. Integrity means doing the right things when nobody is looking. Um, and I say second, eventually you're going to be found out because God knows everything and somehow your partner is going to find out. But it's really quite devastating and I've been a victim of this when you trust your partner and you're doing everything right and they're doing something sneaky behind your back. Thank God I have a partner that's very high in integrity now also. Um, but it's very devastating when you have that. So, I mean, you as a person can be acting always in integrity, but if your partner does not and that's repetitive, that relationship will never work for you. So it's really important, um, the integrity piece. Also, if you're on live with me today, just say hello so I know that you're on. Sometimes this is a little tricky and I am technologically challenged. So just say hello, let me know you're here, I would appreciate it. Okay, the third one is kindness. 
You know, I often say, just be kind. And people like look at me like that's such an attribute. Well, it is. To be kind is to be low key, calm, open minded, open hearted, loving, accepting, not controlling, not pontificating or lecturing. Thanks for saying hello, Sandy. I appreciate it. Okay. I do, uh, I do know I'm on live. Um, but kindness is really important. And when you're each kind to each other, it just makes the relationship so much more loving. And it's unfortunate as a marriage and, ther uh, marriage and family therapist, I see partners usually treating each other the worst. They're beautiful and loving and kind to their friendships. Hi, Liz. Um, but unfortunately, you know, to their partner, they're the worst. So always ask yourself, am I being kind? Am I being loving on a regular basis to my partner? It's so, so important. Just be kind. Keep saying it over and over in your head. And if you find yourself making the mistake, you're coming home from a stressful day and you say something to your partner that's not kind, apologize right away. Say, babe, I'm sorry that didn't sound nice. It's nothing you. I had a rough day. I'm sorry I wasn't kind. So just apologize right away. It is a habit. Kindness is a habit and anyone can develop it. And it's so important to the emotionally healthy evolved love. The next one is empathy. And we've heard this term and it is definitely opening up your heart to understand your partner's feelings and points of view. It's really important that we're both heard by our partner. It doesn't mean that we have to agree with their opinion. We are two separate individuals, but to have empathy for their opinion and point of view is really important. I mean, we've seen in the past few months, oh, this whole um, political nightmare is what I'm calling it. You know, everyone wants to prove their side is right and the other person's wrong. You know, it's perfectly fine for everyone to have their own opinion. All in all, if we're all Americans, we want the country to succeed. That's the team I play on. Let's succeed. And, you know, we all have to stick together as a team and help each other out. So empathy is a very important uh, attribute to have, to extend that open heart, open love, open understanding to someone else in their point of view so you understand where they're coming from. Especially if you have a partner that has any childhood trauma, there's going to be triggers that come up. This is an area that I specialize in, helping couples to be kind when the other partner's triggers are coming up. So, and I know that's difficult because sometimes triggers are lies or manipulations or anger or passive aggressive behavior, but there are techniques for you to recognize and do the conscious mind work to help your partner through a difficult moment and you lead with empathy. So I can help you with that. The next one, number five is patience. We all need more patience in this hurry up life. Um, very important that you take time for yourself too. Self-love and self-patience is important because if you have that, then you tend to be more patient with others. So um, practice that for yourself if you're in business and with your partner. The next one is humility. Um, it's really great to be personally confident about who you are. You should love yourself and all your attributes because when you love yourself, then you are able to love another completely and you're so much more lovable. And it's great to have that confidence and that self-esteem, but we still much must be humble in our world. There's always so much to learn. There's always so much to give. And I always suggest to everyone, start your day out counting your blessings about everything we do have here uh, in our lives. My daughter, Alexi Pano, some of you know her, she puts water wells in Tanzania, Africa, where they don't have running water. These villages of three to 6,000 people, she, they have to walk five miles for a dirty bucket of water. So, I mean, we are really, really blessed. Um, around the world and we should wake up each day with those blessings and um, it helps you to have patience when you have a life full of blessings and gratitude. Um, so that's humility. The next one is responsibility. So we have to be responsible to ourselves and again to the relationship. So that's being on time, being courteous, uh, doing your work and not leaving your work to someone else. Um, financial responsibility, not overspending, paying your bills on time, because if you are a married couple, what you do definitely affects the other person, your credit score and everything else. If one partner is habitually late and paying the bills, both of you go down. So as a couple, these things are really important to practice on a daily basis. So you must be personally 
responsible and responsible to the couple. Number eight is generosity, being generous of heart, of your mind, of your, you know, being open-minded, generous to people, helping out where you can, volunteerism, um, just giving of information, you know, whatever you can do to help out another human being, this is what we're here in this world for, right? And number nine is forgiveness. Huge, huge concept. Um, it is the most spiritually based concept, I would say, uh, in the spiritual world, because you must forgive. We are all human. We all make mistakes. We all want to do well, but we're going to mess up. Uh, in Buddhism, we call this the earth school. So we're here to learn lessons, and we will make mistakes. So if you're a loving, kind partner with empathy, you will find it in your heart to forgive, not only with words, your partner when they make a mistake, but with true actions of forgiveness. Now, of course, we all have to have personal boundaries, and if your partner makes repetitive infractions to the relationships where they are, you know, acting outside of the relationship or having an affair, to forgive once is spiritual, the second time, you know, after you lay down new rules and boundaries, there's a second infraction. That's usually when I say, you know, that maybe enough's enough. So. If you're in question, definitely seek the help of a relationship and life coach and we will help you out because uh, it's always a tough decision to leave someone you love, but you have to love yourself more sometimes if it's a toxic, emotionally unhealthy relationship. So what does it mean really to be evolved? Well, to be involved means to be your advanced in your personal development. It's really to be your very best self spiritually evolved people and I'm not talking religious religious people can be spiritually based but I'm spiritual and I don't call myself religious even though I'm also Reverend Rihanna I do marriages I do we used to do civil unions same-sex couples um, but I've been doing marriages since 1997 so um, but I don't call myself religious I call myself spiritual um, but we spiritual people have the ability to see the good in all people. And we really work on building and maintaining quality love relationships. And that means with our partner, with our friends, with our family, siblings, <clears throat> our clients, you know, to, to give our hearts to our clients. And we try not to ever judge. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I'm still coming over cold. <clears throat> we try not to judge control or criticize others and we always try to extend unconditional love and choose carefully our words and our actions so that they are for the good of all and that is a, a comment my clients hear me say a lot is it for the good of all so I ask them to slow down their thoughts and their words and choose very carefully so that it's not ever hurting anybody themselves or another person or the situation Evolved people have a spiritual mission, and that is to live each moment of every day consciously in the now. That means in the present with always a, a mind on the near future. <coughs> we approach each person with kindness and are open to receiving all that cross our paths, remaining open to meeting a potential partner almost anywhere, any place and any time. And I say this constantly to my clients, uh, the singles who are looking for love especially, you know, they're kind of regimented usually in their old routines. And the first thing I really try that, to get them to do is live in the now and live consciously being totally aware. I met my fiance just a year ago, February 12th, in a parking lot. Coming off of a date, mind you, an online date from Christian singles, because one of my first requirements was to meet a spiritually evolved man. And in my meditations, I added the word beautiful on my fiance's. Very handsome. But, by the way, here we are. Cute, right? Yeah, that's my Joey. Okay, so, <clears throat> a spiritually evolved person. And I was walking to my car, and I hear from a voice behind me, Hi, can I ask you a question? And I turn around, and of course, I'm open. I'm there, sure. I thought maybe he needed help or whatever. He goes, are you spiritual? Because you have this amazing white aura around you. So, you know, he felt and saw my aura. And I said, I happen to be spiritual. I said, for you to ask that question, you must be too. And I knew, okay, this is a result of me calling in the one from my meditations, which I do every day for 15 minutes. 
and he's there, can I talk to you for a minute? And I asked, because I'm consciously aware, are you single? <laughs> you know, because I wasn't going to talk to a spiritual married man. Sorry, I just wasn't doing it. I was not going to be coming on to some spiritual, uh, spiritual married guy. So no, he goes, I'm very single. Here is my card. I want you to know who I am. And we talked for about 15 minutes. And then after that, he asked me out for our first date, which was Valentine's Day. So, and we just had a celebration last weekend um, out of town to celebrate that. So that perfect partner can be anywhere. If I was closed-minded or closed down in my mind or thought, thinking about something negative or saying, oh my God, that date I had, I can't believe he lied. Because a guy from Christian Singles actually lied about his age. He, was, he said he was 59 and he was 69. And I knew because I Google searched him right before I went out. We had tickets to go to the comedy show, which I love. But I knew that he was lying about his age before I got there. So <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to be kind and I will be good company for the show. But I will tell him after the show, look, you know, you really shouldn't lie about your age. I'm somebody that is really one's honesty. It's part of the characteristic traits I'm looking for in a life partner. And I did tell him that. So I just said, you know, you don't lie. Be authentic. Be real. If, you know, I tell you my age, I'm 59. And that's what I put on my profile. I am 59. If you don't like it, don't date me. You know, but I'm not going to lie about it. It's who I am. So be proud of who you are, like who you are. That energy will shine. And even though my energy was not right for that person, I was still kind. And I went out to listen to a band. After he left our date, I shook his hand. I said, go by. I had a glass of wine. And then I went to my car. And there, as the spiritual world would align itself, there was Joey asking me to, you know, if he could chat with me. He just saw me as I was walking to my car. So there it is. That's how I met my guy. So it can be anytime, any place. So singles, be aware. Too many people, when I take them on as a coaching client, I have two or three people who are newer in my mind. They are really shut down in their mind. They are living in the past. They are living in past fears about how they were hurt before. They are living, holding on to their past boyfriends or exes or reaching out to them on Facebook to see who they're talking to or who's in the picture with them. It's all the past, the past, you know, and that's, I always say, in the past is where sadness, depression lies and negativity. In the now, in the future, this is where all possibilities exist. This is where happiness, positivity lives, the light, living in the light, and all your possibilities are right there, right here, right now, in the now. Okay, and your near future. So, if I was in a bad mood or ticked off because I, quote, wasted my time on that date, if I was shut down, I probably would not have talked to Joey at that time. But I'm not. I'm thinking, okay, this was supposed to happen. In our spiritual world, things happen for a reason. We don't always understand why, but we don't question or we don't second guess. We stay positive, we keep moving forward, and we remember the skills that, you know, I teach uh, to keep that open mind. So you've definitely got to get a, over the obsessive ex, the past, a to-do list. A lot of people live in their mind. What is the to-do list? And you've got to get beyond that. I found this quote that I really loved and I put it in my book. <clears throat> it's anonymous. Man cannot discover new oceans until he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. And I really love that. That means you have to let go of your old toxic relationships, the sadness that they didn't work out, trying to analyze over and over why he did or she did what she did doesn't matter it's done take the lessons that you learned move forward that's it so and the other thing you want to let go of is uh what we call a love map now a love map is what you're typically attracted to and this is usually a relationship that you form from an age around four to five to twelve and you would even remember the young man or lady's first name and last name, okay? And it's a little person you had a crush on. So if he was dark hair and dark eyes, like mine was, you're normally attracted to dark hair and dark eyes. Okay, so who is your love map? Now that's going to be your normal go-to person. You have to try and break that habit to look outside of that. Now while I was out there dating, I'm thinking I wanna meet somebody to grow older with, have the best time of my life with, so he'll probably be around 50 to 62. My energy is younger than my age. So when I met my boyfriend, he's a little bit younger than me, 15 years younger than me. 
and I didn't he was not in my love map he was not really what I was looking for but I have learned to open my mind to live each day to see what presents themselves so I was just willing to see where Joe and I would go with everything in our dating and he's very deep and he's spiritual and he's wiser above his years and my energy is lower beyond below my years so we meet in the middle around 50 which works out perfectly for both of us so you want to break the love map know that it's happening try to open your mind to new healthy people try to you know break free and you know your your ideal person may be in the skin of someone you weren't expecting okay so that's why you want to get to know the deeper qualities of somebody that's so much more important um, change the old attraction patterns, where you're going, what you're doing to find someone. You can meet that person at a gas station, in the line at Starbucks, in a parking lot, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. And I have an exercise that's called Just Say Hello. And I taught this to my all my clients. Just say hello. I don't care where you're going. You walk in anywhere. You say hello to the man. You say hello to a lady. You don't know if they're single or married. It doesn't matter. But you're just practicing that energy of getting out of yourself and just saying hi isn't it a gorgeous day i live in florida so that's pretty easy to say oh my god such a pretty day it's like paradise here and i have met many of my partners by just saying hello so try that it works and remember the energy that goes along with it which is a smile and an open heart so keep looking for those internal qualities and gifts that's what will make up the evolved person Remember to have the clear knowledge that the world is really abundant and there's, it's full of wonderful partners out there. They're not only online and that's only one venue to meet someone. I give my clients tons of ideas of where to meet someone and then they also learn this mindset which is brought up in my Live Beyond Your Dreams book. How to have the positive mindset to call in uh, that person uh, of your dreams and also to live a life that you feel so amazing about and it's about having a positive mindset and energy about yourself and your life and love so um, now we're going to go into the next list of nine and these qualities um, some of the qualities we discussed last week on Facebook on Sunday night so again make sure you go into my YouTube page Rihanna Milne look at last week's Facebook but this series started the first Sunday in January so just go from one all the way up and um, I didn't mention but January was breakup month so that's all about recognizing toxic relationships that could break your heart and this month is about uh, how to have a healthy relationship and then I'm going to go into life skills some life things and positivity for March since it's spring and regrowth and feeling great about things okay so here is the second list of nine and again this is how to have love beyond your means uh, dreams which means having an emotionally healthy evolved relationship that has the following nine qualities for each partner and I start with the five F's the first one is foundation and foundation is really really strong it's it's the base it's the most important thing and that is the ability to trust and to be trusted so having confidence in who you are as an individual and as a couple and having shared moral values really important um, you've got to know that that person is doing the right things when they're out there doing their day because nobody has time to babysit their partner nor do you want to so foundation is really important based in trust second F is flexibility that means having an open mind um, being caring and easygoing patient understanding emotionally open and it's really really important to feel safe to have that loving uh, conversation and to be open intimately so flexibility the next F is fidelity fidelity which involves integrity honesty and loyalty so again that integrity piece very important doing the right things when nobody's looking being honest and being loyal to that partner fourth one is friendship you want to be the best friend to your partner you want to be buds you want to be able to hang out and laugh and get crazy together so that means just always being kind and thoughtful act as a best friend to your partner think how great you are with your best friends that's how fun and easygoing and loving you should be also with your partner keep it luck keep it fun don't be moody you know also you want to respect yourself um, and others so always respecting yourself and your partner the fifth F is have fun 
That is sharing common interests, hobbies, shared activities, fun, and romance is really a big part of having an ongoing, lifelong relationship that you absolutely love, love, love. Gotta have fun, otherwise what's it for? Okay, number six is intimacy. Yes, we all want to have great intimacy, great love, great sex, and passion. So how do you have that? Well, honestly, it's a balance of love, the sexual passion for each other, deep friendships, and that comes with a daily sign of physical affection, verbal words of love, and ongoing romance. Now, romance isn't going to happen day in and day out. We all have lives. We all work. But the weekend should be something, or your two days off should be something that you look forward to. You've got to keep dating your partner. It's funny in my... Um, my marriage clients who they're like well I got married like why do I have to date anymore and it's like no 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 the dating never stops let's face it you want to still make love right you got to keep dating your lady never ends so and what I also teach the guys is the men and women think very different um, about sex within their brains that we're wired differently so the man's center sexual center of the brain is seven times the size of a woman's Okay, so that's why a man, like at any time, they usually want to have sex, where a woman needs the romance. The woman's brain is hardwired where all five senses must be ignited to feel romantic or feel the feeling of wanting love and sex. So I should say sex, not just love. She wants love, of course, all the time. So the sexual feelings come with the five senses being turned on. So, you know, is she smelling your, your cologne, men? Is she seeing you dress ha handsome for her and shaving and, you know, looking great for the date? Um, are you listening to music, romantic music? Are you getting something to eat? Don't overeat like a snack or something because too big of a dinner can tend to ruin a sexual night. And then, you know, words of uh, love. Is she hearing you know, nice things from you. You never go out on a date and complain about your day or complain about money. You talk about things that are romantic or dreams that you have, like a, a dream trip that you want to talk about and plan. So intimacy is something sometimes it has to be planned for through a date, but the daily things of love are a kiss hello, goodbye, holding hands while you're watching TV, asking them, honey, you need anything from the kitchen? The little things mean a lot. They all add up to feeling loved, nurtured, and cared for. And the next thing that's really important about intimacy is, especially for females, they must feel very safe to risk sexually, to, to be more into play and role play and, and feisty things. Why? Because she's opening herself up to sharing more of herself. So guys, make her feel like a goddess. Um, don't control her, never put her down, never use words that are criticizing or insulting. Treat her like the queen and the goddess that she is, and in turn, she'll treat you like a king. It goes hand in hand, guys. That's just the way it is. Ladies, if you're on the call and you agree with me, please type that in there that you agree, treat you like a queen and a goddess. Okay, the next one, number seven, is compromise. Um, you need to be able to compromise and nego negotiate through your issues with respect, even though there's a difference of opinion, and that's okay to say, babe, let's just agree to disagree on this one. I still love you. You have your opinion and I have mine. And you know, sometimes there's cultural differences. You know, grow it. Joey grew up in a Hispanic um, foundation and culture. Me, I'm very German, Swedish. <laughs> grew up to be very independent female, take care of myself and my kids, and earn a, a good living, work hard, you know. And he is more traditional, so we talk through those differences. And that's fine, you know. It doesn't mean that's not the right partner for you. That means you have to talk through and renegotiate and compromise. And sometimes it's culturally based or religious based or how you ra raise children is what you know from your family and he knows something different. So always be willing to compromise and talk through and if you need help then seek out a relationship coach. Okay, um, always willing to apologize if you make a mistake. That is a sign of character, not of weakness. And it's a sign that you're living very consciously that you've made a mistake. Apologize as soon as you realize that. And again, offer forgiveness without blaming your partner or criticizing. Um, you do want to talk through to make sure that either a new boundary is created or whatever happened, each partner understands how it happened, why it happened, and set up some ideas that you want to, new rules to follow so it doesn't happen again.
Number eight, individual balance. Both partners must have healthy self-esteem, good boundaries, definitely have pur purpose and gratification in their work that they go to each day, and have quality relationships with their friends and family. That's really important. Uh, when your balance is off, and I describe it as an equilateral triangle, okay, where it's you, your partner, and the relationship. So in the you time, you have to have time for work, self, and family. Okay, another equal triangle. So I talk about triangles in my balance chapter, but when you feel anxiety or depression, it's normally because you're out of balance. So it's really easy when you understand balance and boundaries that I teach when something is off, how to correct it. And your anxiety that comes up, your a little sense of depression comes up, it's like, hmm, something's off, what's off, how can I correct it? Okay, so you wanna make sure you're, you're maintaining balance the best that you can. And the last one, number nine, is spirituality. Because it's really important, each person has faith in something greater than themselves. And it provides guidance for them as an individual to do the right things. And it also demands accountability in their life. So if you've got two partners doing the right things, thinking before they do say and act, is this in integrity, is this honest, is this for the good of us, the couple, two people doing that, Research shows the best long-lasting relationships are, is one that is faith-based and spiritually based, not necessarily religious, okay? So spiritually faith-based, however you guys define that. So it's something that you do want to look at practicing together. So if you find in any way that from this discussion tonight that you're personally lacking any of these attributes or many of them because they're really important essential qualities that it makes up a lifelong relationship and if you're single and struggling to find or keep a love relationship then you want to definitely get into life coaching first because that's how I do my programs. It's always life coaching first to make you feel amazing about who you are so that your energy and your aura is just out there. It's just out there. Um, and people see it. You know, have you ever been in a party and one person walks in a room and they've got this aura around them? That's what I'm talking about. That's someone who just feels great about life. And if you're in a relationship and you find the relationship is struggling and you know really deep down and you're honest of honest hearts, you're like, wow, I'm toxic. I am angry. I am not a good person. I, I have to figure out why I'm upset or anxious or depressed all the time. And definitely come see me because, again, when I'm helping a couple, I have to help the two partners and then the relationship third. <clears throat> so it all involves life coaching. So you must love yourself. Know that you're a wonderful, awesome person and you're a great partner and you're bringing a lot of things to the table to be, you know, to help make a fabulous relationship. And if you're single, you need that or to, you know, attract great love into your life. And we got to get you out of the past. Close the door on the past. Keep it there. Everything from the past is no longer can't be changed. Um, and, and that's where I'm finding most single people suffer. They're living in the past. So it is my job to have them think differently, change their mindset, get them into the now, get them positive, and get them thinking and doing differently. So... <clears throat> We want you to definitely live consciously, be an example to the world, that amazing person out there. Create a life that exemplifies the best character to you, your partner, your family, and the world. And when you do that, everything falls in line in your life. Relationship skills, unfortunately, have not been taught to any of us. I certainly made plenty of mistakes. I had more marriages. I, I'm losing count. But I didn't know any of this. And my last partner, um, unfortunately, had childhood trauma. And I have a triple master's degree in applied clinical and counseling psychology. And nowhere in that education did they teach me about childhood trauma. And if you choose a partner with childhood trauma, what comes up? What triggers comes up? How to handle it? What is the secret life? What is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Why is there two people, and I know this fabulous one and this other person, all of a sudden comes out of the woodwork? I was shocked. Okay, so nobody teaches us things, and that's why when I wrote my love book, I wrote it after that relationship, and I learned in my meditation, my, my divine meditation, I heard a voice that said, Rihanna, write the book that's going to help you and so many others. And I just got done writing Live, which was 328 pages. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to write another book right now. It's a lot of work. 
And I go to the beach that day and the ideas just flow through me, from me, just through me. And I'm like, okay, God sending me all these ideas and I'm just writing like a mad woman. And I'm like, wow, this would really be a great book. I have to write this book. So 424 pages later, and it is number one on best, uh, bestseller on Amazon in women in spirituality and couples therapy. And it has helped so many people already avoid toxic love, realize in themselves what they were doing wrong and have to change. Um, there's like a chapter, are you love addicted? Are you codependent? You know, uh, what to do if you're finding someone is toxic? How do you do that? How do you work with that? So, you know, it's, it's a lot of information that I think would be really helpful. So, um, it's important to put all these skills that you learn into daily practice, commit yourself to lifelong learning, and for ongoing improvement to have this loving, enduring relationship. And you want it to last, so you want to create the love that you deserve that's really, really way beyond your dreams. So that's tonight's topic, and if you got value from this Facebook Live, please do share or tag it to a friend who may need help or you definitely know needs to hear it. And if you want any more information on me or other topics to read, please go to my website, rihannamilne.com, and my YouTube channel hosts all my videos, and that channel is Rihanna Milne. While you're there, please like it and subscribe to it. And when you subscribe, you'll get all my new tapes as I upload them. If you need personal help and you found this topic is hitting home with you, definitely write me. Uh, when you go into my website, rihannamilne.com, a little form will come up and say, contact me for a free coaching strategy session. And it is me. It comes directly to my email. I will reach out to you and set up a free session for you. Um, it takes about 45 minutes and we'll set it up on Skype if you're out of the country and I do coach around the world. Uh, I do prefer Skype because I get to know you a little bit by seeing you and uh, I'll, I'll see if I can help you with something you're struggling with. So you must be over 21 to use that, but just rihannamilne.com and the contact me form. And also for everybody, I have a free app. It's worldwide. It's called My Relationship Coach. Just download it on Google for Android or iPhones. And if you want tonight's handout, what does the Evolve Partner and Relationship look like? Just email me at rihannamilne at gmail.com and say, I want the handout. And tell me a little bit about you and your story. I'd love to get to know you. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this with other people. Next, this Sunday already, the 26th, the last Sunday in Fe February, it'll be the last topic um, in celebrating love. How close are you as a couple to having the evolved relationship? And the questions to ask your partner. So, and if you're single, it's a great way to measure the quality of your last relationship, figure out what went wrong and why it didn't last and what you need to do different next time. So you're gonna learn a lot too, even if you're single. So it's for both singles and couples, men and women. And that is next Sunday or this coming Sunday, the 26th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't be on the call live, do upload the video or go to YouTube. And uh, guys, have an amazing week. Be loving, be kind. And um, my goal always, again, is for you to be and attract that emotionally healthy, evolved partner. And until then, I wish you a very blessed and happy life and for you to have the life and love.